Charles a couple of months ago right here on Fox Face Off, I said to you and to the entire nation that what was happening with the Russian-Ukraine war was bigger. And when we saw China cuddling Russia, refusing to condemn Russia for its invasion of Ukraine, when we saw how China is making deep friendships with Iran and how China refused to use its influence over North Korea to stop the behavior of North Korea that is dangerous to the world. China's a communist government, North Korea communist government. What we see in Russia is a communist government. Now, the Biden administration has come out now that they spent $290 million for radiation pills because Vladimir Putin is threatening to use nuclear weapons. Charles, that's not enough. America must go further than that to make sure Vladimir Putin does not use nuclear weapons. I think it's time for it to reveal to the world America's technological power in space when it comes to stopping nations like who want to have rogue behavior like Russia from using such weapons. I, I clearly agree with you that buying $290 million worth of anti-radiation exposure drugs from a California pharmaceutical company is not enough to, to stop the, the drums of war that are beating in Eastern Europe and Asia. It's horrifying. I, I see, while China and Korea might call themselves communist regimes and Russia might call itself a democracy, I see all three of them as being evil authoritarian regimes where human rights are meaningless. I mean, obviously we have the horrible concentration camps in China, but yet we still keep buying their That's goods right. and no one cares. It was, in fact, President Trump who did many things wrong but his, his foreign policy with China was a lot more aggressive than we've seen from this administration or the prior administration, and I think necessary. I think we really have to look at this threat. I'm bothered by the fact that the Biden administration, the Jean-Pierre, the press secretary refuses to address it, that it only leaked out of a, a wealthy donor private meeting where it sounds like the president was using it off the cuff to scare people into giving his his party millions of dollars, but I think it's time for real diplomacy, and I really think it's time for the media to start demanding diplomacy instead of turning a blind eye to the fact that we have people in America starving, we have people in America without health care, we have people in America without hope, and yet we're spending, sending hundreds of billions of dollars around the world, but specifically to a corrupt But that's Ukraine, the American way. To, but it shouldn't be the American way. At some point, we should start worrying about Americans too, right? But and remember, and when Trump said that, when Trump said that, said, make America first, a lot of people were angry about that. But I understand that, one, let's get something clear, I'm not a Trump supporter, never voted for the man, and would not vote for him. But he was right when he said America first. What does he mean? Charity starts at home first, then it spreads abroad. You cannot do for others what you're failing first to do for yourself. So the American government must be a government that seeks to take care of its own citizens first. We got people right in America living like third world conditions, no health care, failing educational systems. We can't find qualified teachers to even teach our children anymore by the tens of thousands. They don't want the jobs because they're not making living wages. Why don't we take the money we're sending to Ukraine? and spend some of that money right at home to fix our domestic affairs. I agree with you, Charles, but you cannot negotiate with a madman. Putin is not interested in negotiating. This man, as you said earlier, is a former KGB operative, which is equal to America's CIA agents. This man has a gangster mindset. This man assassinates those who criticize his own government, his own citizens in foreign nations. How do you negotiate with a madman who believe he so, is the so power? what do you think the solution is, Quanell? If you can't negotiate, diplomacy is not the solution, which I do think diplomacy is the solution. I just think the Biden administration is doing a horrible, almost cowardly job at it, right? We saw Saudi Arabia just last week side with Russia over the price of oil, while Biden is out there claiming that the, the reduction in the price of oil and gas is, is, is thanks to his administration, but not taking ownership of the tripling of the price it was actually because of his administration as well, and its antagonism towards the petrochemical industry that keeps this entire city afloat and is great for the state of Texas. Uh, I will tell you, we don't have appropriate reporting 
reporting on the Biden administration. We have, uh, we have all the horns blaring whenever they do something right, and they do do things right, but then we have silence when they do things horrible. And it's the polar opposite of what happened during the Trump administration. When Trump would do something wrong, it would be on the front page of every newspaper except for the conservative press. And when he did something right, there were crickets. But the and what reason, we need is a return to journalism, and we need to the demand reason, diplomacy. What do you want to do? But the reason why it was like that, because President Trump, had he listened to wise, intelligent counsel around him and not been so arrogant, he would have shut down his Twitter when he became president. His, his arrogance had, is what led but, him to but be But wait president. a minute. No, that's not true. What led him to be president was when he said to the American people, I will not take a dime from corporate America. I'm going to run as a man who's not financed by the powers that be. What gave him the office when he said to the working masses of the American people, America first, we're going to take care of you first, then everybody else. What got him in the president's office when he told the United Nations, this is no longer corporate welfare. You're going to have to pay your way. America's not paying for you like we've been doing in the past. What led him to the office is when he said to the American people that I will fulfill my promises to you no matter how crazy they are I will fulfill them and no matter what we say about the man he tried to fulfill every damn promise that he made. So that's what got him elected I, I mean, but I what got him unelected that. what got him unelected was how he handled COVID. What got him unelected was his underestimating the people's anger and how he dealt with COVID. What got him unelected was his arrogance, not paying attention to the, to the war drums beating to take the seat away from him, which was a global effort. But back to Russia. Let me tell you something. If you notice when North Korea got a little crazy and Trump called him little rocket man and told him my button is bigger than yours, he got himself in order. You notice when Trump told China, Look, I'm going to put taxation on you. I'm going to put tariffs on you right now because we're going to make this business deal equal. Nobody stood up to them like that. And nobody stood to North Korea like that. And then when a man told Iran, we're going to rip up this deal that you made with the Obama administration, we're going to side with Israel, and we're going to deal with you. All of America's enemies were afraid that we had a madman in office. And so Putin is a madman. President Biden needs to grow some testicular fortitude and speak truth to power when it comes to Putin, China, and North Korea. Stop talking like a damn old, weak-kneed coward and stand up and speak with the American force and let them know if you get out of line, we got something we ain't told you about that we will deal with you. See, that space technology, we ain't touched on that. And there's a whole lot of weapons America got up there. So look, man, why don't you tell these thugs like Putin, don't play with us. Well, that's not happening, right? Instead, we're going hat in hand to Saudi Arabia and begging for oil. At some point, they'll be lifting these sanctions on Russia and begging for energy. With you know, the Europe is staring down the barrel of a terrifying winter without enough resources to make it through for many working class citizens. If you look at the cost of energy in the United Kingdom and Germany and other European nations, it's skyrocketing and it's horrifying. And it's not getting a whole lot of media attention. But this Armageddon issue, when you have a president trot out the, the argument that we're closer to World War III and a nuclear Armageddon, he used the word Armageddon, than we have been since 1962, and largely we hear crickets from the media, from the media, it should concern us. Because this, it's this, this failed brinksmanship of the Biden administration has contributed to the conflict in the Ukraine. And now we're taking billions upon billions upon billions of our tax dollars. And when you say charity begins at home, this isn't a charity to me. This is October 15th coming up. I'm going to send another six figure check to our government, a government that I don't feel does a whole lot for me, right? I feel like I'm paying, giving them a lot of money and getting very little in return. It was interesting when I went and got my COVID booster and my flu shot, right? If I had insurance information, I had to provide it or attest that I didn't have it, which of course I do. I pay that very large bill since Obamacare every month. And because I have insurance, because I'm a participating American, I got to pay. I had to pay a $15 copay for the flu shot, and my insurance company has to pay for COVID. But if you're not, if you don't have insurance, if you just don't care, if you're not working it, or you're a person in the need of the safety net of America, but there's a lot of people that don't need the safety net, they're just lazy, they get it for free. And that's what we're doing now. When we talk about the student loan forgiveness, it's a universal forgiveness. Well, Charles, not if you make too much Charles. money and you pay federal taxes. We have a government that is doing things for people Russia. all over the world. You're the one who talked about a charity. It's not charity when you're paying the government. 
and the government's doing nothing for you in return. You misunderstood all the analogy the world. that I used. Okay. Well, it's not charity the analogy when you're that I used. And our government was this. does very little for it's, participatory it's American proverb. Period. It's an African proverb okay. that says charity starts at home first. No, it's actually then just a it proverb. Spreads abroad. No, it's but, an African proverb. Okay. That it starts at home first and it spreads abroad. This is true. We cannot look to do for others what we're feeling first to do for ourselves in America. We have no health care solution in America. But my concern is this we, Russian we have conflict. Back crime, on Russia. Criminal justice is can out we of get, control. Can we stay on Russia, Yeah, we please? can stay on Russian conflict. Because we need this is about America's foreign policy. We need aggressive diplomacy. No, well, this is what and we that need. is one thing that this Trump what we did need. well. And the media framed it as, well, Trump this is what just... We need, uh, man. Trump is somehow... We need somebody Putin's else. Bitch, but Putin would have done this we on Trump's We need somebody else. So what are you to do in the middle of this presidential term we're just going to hold our breath we can and do. hope there's not nuclear no, war let me tell you what we can do be honest with you this may sound a little extreme from you well i think that maybe donald trump should send putin a message that says i have a good possibility of winning re-election because he does according to polls and let him know that if you do this, when I become president, it will be hell to pay. That we will not forget, nor will we as Americans surrender the world stage to a thug, that we will hold you accountable. A new day is coming quick. Look, something we has to be done. Two years. Something has to be if done there's a nuclear to speak war, the language. America to isn't going to exist But as somebody got to say something to Putin to let him know that we are serious well, because right now we don't have anybody in the current administration that that man would even think is serious who was talking like that. And the problem is, where is our sister so Kamala Harris? So you're saying Harris? Kamala Harris isn't where is serious? She? Where is you're she? You're saying she's not serious? Not on that level, no. Okay. Nobody, How about John Kerry? Nobody on the world stage How about John is going to listen to Sister Harris, Vice President Harris, and listen to John Kerry. They're not going to listen, man. Look, we have to deal with this differently because Putin is a thug and he's a madman. And I'm going to tell you something. I think it's within him to do it. But it's well, time. Where do you think you're bomb? You're but I, I think it's time that we send a message that's clear to Putin. We have space technology that can shut you down in the twinkling of an eye before you ever launch one bomb out of its silos. We have space technology that your nuclear submarines won't get even down the street if we so desire. I believe America has that technology and we need to reveal it to Putin if we really believe he's going to take that step and let him know our technology is way far superior than yours in space and we will shut you completely down and punish you at the same well, time. That might have we got to do true, something. But China just, what, about a year ago, uh, used a missile test where they delivered in, in subspace around the world in mere moments. Right. And it was incredibly well targeted, probably with stolen American technology. But the, th the truth is that we don't have a missile shield, at least a fully functioning one in America, because it's something we've How always we not bent go? the knee. How could we not go? Because we've you forgot about the Iron Dome? You we've forgot been, about the Iron Dome? I have not forgotten President about the Iron Reagan Dome. talked a lot about America's Iron Dome. Right. Israel has a legitimate iron they dome certainly do. from decades ago. You don't think there's been tremendous advancements in that technology? Let's tell the truth about the advanced technology of America's iron dome. Let's reveal it to Putin and let him know we'll send you back to the dark ages. You know, I, I think that this is going to, I don't think this is something that can wait two years until I agree we have a you. new administration. I think it's something that is not getting a lot of media attention because the Biden administration is failing to address it appropriately. Instead of just throwing billions of dollars at Ukraine to spend it, however, the hell they want, we should be interceding. And this isn't with American boots on the ground, right? I absolutely no, disagree. I agree. You know, we talk about, but some people take the argument that the Republicans do better on foreign policy, but the Bush, the, the George W. Bush administration just mired us in a decades-long pointless war in Iraq where we've just taught people in the Middle and East Afghanistan. To, to absolutely hate America with, absolute, with no achievement, no accomplishment, and we lost so many American lives. And turned so the government back over to the very people right. we said were the enemies I mean, that caused us to invade.
point, needed. American citizens have to start demanding more of their leaders. Instead of having leaders like Biden that just tell people on the left whatever they want to hear and use terms like Armageddon to fear monger, or leaders like Trump on the right that just create an echo chamber of hate mongering to encourage people to listen to whatever they want. They're just both glorified salesmen with absolutely no, no sense of, of moral integrity or honesty. And I'm sorry if that pisses all of you off, but it's true. And you need to stop listening to people that are telling you what you want to hear and start demanding our leaders lead because our leaders aren't. Our leaders are going to Washington to feed at the trough of fame and trough of fame and wealth while they're doing nothing and we're just driving this country off a damn cliff. And I, while I believe in this country, I believe we face significant headwinds and this could be the end but of the empire unless we something. start demanding America, more from America for Americans and for you. the world. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote a book in the 1960s called The Fall of America. And he predicted that America would bring herself down to her own knees because of arrogance, pride, and vanity, and desire for global wealth and power. America must change, Charles. Well, how so? And I mean, it's easy to say that, but how, how do you want to I see America change? I, to be honest with you, I would love, I would love to see this, brother, that Congress pass a law and the Senate back it that no corporate entity can make one campaign contribution to a well, politician. Well, the Supreme Court has said that, that, that that's an infringement of the free but, speech clause of the First Amendment. But we need it, though, because too many of our leaders are not picked by the people. They're picked by corporate powers who determine who our leaders are. we got to get back in America to where the American people are truly the ones who pick our leaders. And if we don't get rid of the corporate super dollars involved in the electoral process, well, then the American people will no longer have a voice like we don't have now. All right. Well, that was the zeitgeist of Trump, right? That was the moment of Trump was his willingness to engage in, in populist politics, speaking directly to people and telling them what they want to hear. And I think he delivered a robust economy and delivered he delivered criminal justice reform for the African American community that he got he got no attention other than Biden's Biden's policy last week is freeing zero people. Zero people. Uh, no one, uh, there'll be some pardons. Yeah, President Trump's criminal justice reform actually freed a lot of people that got unduly long sentences thanks to Biden legislation for the 90s. But the media frames everything in a different way, right? There, we have an honest conversation. But for the most part, the media is not interested in having honest conversations with America. It is a for-profit business that they are stewarding people in narratives that they think will get them worked up and get them incited and divided. We should all be unified right now. We, there, are, there are things that are more important than our personal grievances and our historical grievances. And the threat of nuclear and war what is that we thing. Be unified about? We, we should be unified about stopping Putin from starting a nuclear war, about demanding the Biden administration engage in top-shelf diplomacy I think that we and should figure be, out a damn solution. I think that we should be unified with the American people having a sincere say in America's foreign policy. Okay. Because the government and our elected officials in Washington do not care what the American people think when it comes to making and shaping foreign policy because they feel a lot of Americans don't educate themselves on foreign policy. We need the American people to better educate themselves on foreign policy and then make a collective demand of what we want to see on the world stage. So do you think the American Trump people did a get better job on foreign policy than Obama and Biden? I believe that Trump did a better job in dealing with America's enemies okay. than what President so Obama did So are you going to support, if it's, Biden. if it's Biden and Trump but in 24, believe, are you supporting I believe Biden I'm Trump? not supporting either one of them okay. because let me tell you something, I'm supporting God. And I don't think either one of them really supports God at all. And I'm standing with God. I will not vote before I cast a vote for either man. But one thing I will say, let's be honest. If I had to pick one based on foreign policy and dealing with America's enemies, Trump would do a better job than what Biden will. Look at President Biden. He went to Saudi Arabia and talked to a known admitted criminal and a Saudi prince who admitted to murder of a dissident of his country in the media. He didn't admit This it. was he, a media he, personality he, that admitted his people did it and right. that the killing took place in his embassy. Nothing happens on that level without his approval at the top. So for that man to admit that he assassinated a member of the media and chopped up his body in a Saudi embassy, 
And then Biden go over there with his hat in his hand, begging that man to help reduce all prices and reduce gas prices so he would have a better chance in the November elections with his Democratic side of the fence, his party. And now that man turned right around and sided with Russia. And now the prices of gas are going all the way back up. That shows you that America's enemies don't give a damn about Biden. Well, you're also not seeing the media give a whole lot of attention to the fact that the, the middle class and lower middle class and upper middle class and poor in America are struggling to put food on the table, gas on their car. And now we've upper got... Upper middle the, class? The, no, all, everybody. Middle is, class? I, I think everybody is. Poor. And the Fed... Ain't no such the, thing as upper middle the, class the, and middle the, class. The, the Fed is actually trying to tank the economy, trying to increase unemployment, trying to ruin the American economy and push it into a recession so there doesn't have to be any austerity on the Biden administration's part and the media is largely silent. It's time we start demanding truth in politics. And it's, it's amazing that you, I mean, that's the thing. If, if we would have had more regret China, Okay, let's take China for the example. Let's talk about this virus that has killed millions of people around the world. I want to talk about that people one. Here. But no one's holding China to account. It absolutely, very obviously, there was a gain-of-function research in the Wuhan laboratory that accidentally, I don't think they did it on purpose, accidentally leaked out, killed millions of Americans. And why isn't America demanding reparations from China for destroying our economy and killing so many people? Why isn't the global community doing it? Because they're all afraid of China. And now Putin is making a great number of people afraid of him and it's time for America to get some damn Let backbone me, and stand up and say this is what, what we're going to do. It's what I said earlier Charles until the American people elect a leader with high intelligence but also has as my grandfather would say and grandmother the gonads to tell America's enemies we ain't playing no games. Right until we do that with an American leader who wants to see American prosperity first before the rest of the world, but also has compassion and empathy and sympathy for the suffering on the, around the world, around the globe, and wants to help do something about it. But that leader recognizes that we gotta take your home first. Until we get a leader like that who's not playing on Twitter like, a, like an adolescent child, the, then America will be in the right direction. Twitter's yesterday. Our new presidents will all come from TikTok. It's all going downhill from here. Have you seen TikTok? No, I don't mess with the TikTok. I'm too old for TikTok. It has taken control of our babies. Yeah. We got three and four year olds making TikTok videos now. My poor daughter, nine years old, drives me up the wall with TikTok. Confession's good for the soul. I gotta tell the truth. <laughs> Many in America are angry with brother Kanye West because of some very inflammatory statements and insulting and offensive remarks he made in regards to Jewish people, where he said he was going to go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. And many were even outraged that he would wear a shirt that said White Lives Matter, because we as black people, many felt it was a direct insult and slap in the face to black people who championed the movement of Black Lives Matter in America. And all that black people were saying is that, please place the same value on black life as you have done white life in this country. It is an absolute legal fact in this country that the United States Constitution first declared us as black people as three-fifths of a human being, one-fifth away from a gorilla. And we had no value. We also live in a country where to be separate and unequal was a legal right that black people did not have the same legal rights as white people because we were inferior based on skin color. We also remember the Dred Scott decision from the United States Supreme Court that said that, this out of Supreme Court, that a white man was not legally bound to respect the rights of a black person in this country. And that's solely based on race. So we want America to see the value that they've placed on white lives, the same value placed on black lives. Brother Kanye, I believe has suffered from some serious mental health problems. When you look at the way he was attacking his ex-wife and attacking what she was doing, which was nothing wrong, and the words he used and the things that he said, you could tell our brother is suffering from some type of mental health breakdown. He's had a history of mental health problems and being under treatment and therapy for it. So I would hope that instead of us condemning brother, that we find a way to get him some help because obviously he needs it. 
You know, I don't think the argument, I've heard this and seen this online, the argument that he's mentally ill so he should get a pass on saying horrifying things, it doesn't hold water for me. Initially, I think that you have to look, for any speech, you have to look at the underlying basis or the mindset that led to the speech. Right? I don't think saying white lives matter is in any way a denigration of the Black Lives Matter movement if it's merely someone saying, hey, you know, there are a lot of struggling white people, a lot of pe white people that are, are down and in poverty and they need help up too. I don't think that is in any way undermining the Black Lives Matter movement. However, the people that respond with Blue Lives Matter, because obviously police officers' lives matter as well, or White Lives Matter, as a rejoinder to shut up discussion spurred from the position of Black Lives Matter, that's a different thing. Like if it's a racist, just trotting that out to silence discussion, it's completely different. But on the flip side, it's also used as a cudgel to silence any sort of robust discussion about how we don't fix one discrimination with a new discrimination that seems to be on the mindset of a lot of the proponents uh, that are fueling diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations. But of course, we need those conversations. We need them to have a better America. But with Kanye, he wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt to the Paris, Paris fashion show merely to get media attention. And he got that media attention. He spent two nights on Tucker Carlson because conservatives and right-wing ideologues are so willing to embrace anyone of color that seems to repeat any of their talking points, right? We're seeing this, this really kind of strident debate going on between two African-American candidates in Georgia between former football player great Herschel Walker and uh, Raphael Warnock, uh, the pastor. Right, and you're seeing this embrace in the hypocrisy and dishonesty with both candidates, and it's left them, the people in Georgia, with really who's gonna be worse kind of decision making. With Kanye, Kanye thought he would get a pass on anti-Semitism by his embrace of conservatism, but it's a kind of an odd embrace. It seems disingenuous and not honest. But the truth is, none of it about Kanye is honest. It's all designed to create a media machine to get attention. We also find out that some of his most horrifying comments that he made to Tucker Carlson about Jews were edited out, about control. These are the common things that Hitler trotted out you know, almost a century ago. You talk about a number of, of legal opinions that were horrifying. Dred Scott, what a horrifying legal opinion. It was overturned over 100 years ago, separate but equal. Also a horrifying doctrine that was overturned with Brown v. Board of Education. But what's unusual is now in 2022 America, you have advocates for new separate but equal. New spaces, we're seeing dormitories and universities across this country that are saying they're, they're only for people of color. We're seeing classrooms and programs in public universities that aren't white people are excluded from. And none and of it makes wrong. sense. No, and it's wrong. Right. None of it makes sense, right? And we want to protect people from feelings instead of having conversations. But I will tell you, before we started filming this, you took the position, which I would love to hear explained, that Kanye West can't be an anti-Semite because he is a black man, and you are parsing the term anti-Semitism. But can you explain me, that to the audience? Let me explain that. Please. Because when you look up the root of the word Semite, Semite means black. The original Semitic people are black African people, the Falasha Jews in Ethiopia. So to say that he's anti-Semitic is to also equal that he's anti-black against his own self and people. But many among us would say maybe Kanye, is, Kanye West is anti-black because he wore a shirt saying white lives matter. Here's my problem with all of this. My concern is, is that if a white person says something truthful, about the black community, we quickly call them a racist. If somebody says something truthful about members of the Jewish community that's not right, we quickly call them anti-Semitic. If a black person says something about the white community that's truthful, oh, he's anti-white. We all need to grow up, evolve and mature, and say no matter what the color of the person is that's speaking the truth, don't pay more attention to the messenger than we're willing to do with the message. When Donald Trump made this statement, he said to black people, why don't you vote for me? You should vote for me. You got nothing else to lose. As sad and as hurtful as that was for many black people, he told the absolute truth because we as a people, 
black people have given an undying love and support to the Democratic Party for generations that has not been equal in return. So we may not like the messenger that said it, but what the man said was the truth. Well, can you tell me, you're talking about people making comments that are true about groups of people defined by immutable characteristics. Can you tell me some things that people say about the white community that's true or things that people oh, say absolutely. about the Jewish community that's true or absolutely. things that people say about a black community absolutely. that's true? Okay. When, when people say to the Jewish community, especially black people, that why in the 60s and the 50s there was such a close, united relationship with black leadership and black civil rights organizations to where we work together. But during the 90s and the 2000s and even now, that relationship is nothing near what it once was. Why is there such a gap and a divide between the two communities now? Also, when somebody says as a black person to white people that, look, white lives have always mattered in America. Black life didn't. Let me give you the actual facts to back that up. And all we want is equality based on the value of life, regardless of the skin color. Value us like you value yourselves and value others. That's the fact. That's the truth. When somebody says to black people that you cannot look for the United States government to do for you what God has given you, the energy, the intelligentsia, and the resources to do for yourselves. When somebody white says to black people, you're giving your love to a party that don't love you, that's facts. But we got to get beyond looking at the person who's saying it and let's measure what they're saying. So a white racist trope for, for decades in, in the modern American era was to take a, a criminal act by an individual black person and try to condemn the black community as a whole. And the media participated in that yes. using coded language. We saw a shift in the last 20 years that has been heightened by the data is very clear on this in the last five years, is that now if it's an African American committing a crime that they suppress the, 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 the issue of race in the reporting to not continue false narratives that are designed to condemn the black community as a whole. But conversely, if it's a white bad actor, that's always in the high headline. White person does this, white person does that. Because now we're in a paradigm in the media where they love to condemn white people holistically and not talk about them individually and do the converse with African Americans. And the truth is that just because you share a skin color, uh, an ethnicity, a gender or an orientation with someone else, uh, an immutable characteristic that you have nothing to do with, you have no liability for their bad acts. And you talk about equality in front of the camera, but off camera it's often about what well, you use the term equity and you use that term to, to justify a new discrimination against white people. The and white people should be? just, ex just expect be? it, right? And the thing is, at the end of the day, we should be going towards equality. We should be trying to achieve a more equal America where those of us that get up every day and work our asses off benefit from the system that is designed to so, to, so to, do you think to, to I'm provide... wrong? Do you think I'm wrong, and other black people like me are wrong when we advocate that America should pay black people reparations? I don't think that you're wrong when you take any position that you honestly believe. I think that you're wrong when you take one position on the camera and you take another position off camera. And what we're talking about now is an anti That's the equity you're talking about. Okay, you want, to talk, talking you, about. you want to shift this to reparations? Yes. Okay, so what we have, right, when we had this during COVID, when they just said, hey, if you don't make a whole lot of money, we're going to give you $1,200 or whatever it was, right? So all of those that have a job that aren't working because of the lockdowns, and aren't making any money, but you made too much money last year, we're not going to do anything for you. But prisoners in jail, people on benefits that all got their benefits, they all got a check. And that check did nothing, right? If you talk to my salesman down at the Gucci store, he said people came in in droves and spent all that money right away. If we're going to make America better and make America more equal, what we need to do is we need to make America safer. We need to make schools better. What's and we need, hold on. Hold on. What's going to do reparations, though? What's going to do reparations? Do you want me to finish? Okay, we got plenty of time here. At the end of the day, what you're going to do, and what the, the, the whole goal, in my opinion, of both parties is to focus on issues that will divide Americans by race. Because the more divided we are, the easier we are to control. That's when you hear terms like universal, universal daycare. Well, we say universal, but if you both are working and you make good money, no, your daycare is going to cost a whole bunch more because of the federal involvement in the system. Universal health care. 
Well, you know, we said universal, but we don't mean it. In fact, this new design, this new paradigm in America is to do nothing for the people that pay the bulk of the taxes. And that's the middle class, right? Because the wealthy... But they you completely pay, have I'm, ran away from no, the subject I'm matter there. of reparations. I'm getting there. And so you have the super wealthy that don't pay anything in taxes. They get all these benefits from the government and the poor. And some of the poor are poor because they're disabled, poor because they haven't had an opportunity. And then some people are poor because they're lazy. But then we just give people money and expect nothing, right? If you really want to repair the damage, and there is a horrifying economic legacy of the transatlantic slave trade, a horrifying economic legacy, especially in the deep south of Jim Crow, I will tell you, when I moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, I was shocked by the level of racism in Boston that was so much worse than people love to think. Houston's got to be racist and in the south. And many people want to be talking about are, that. We are the most the diverse Coast. community, exactly. most diverse big city in America. And, and, and what you talk about racism being palpable every day. I don't know that experience because I'm not a person of color. But if you want to fix and repay that debt, do I think giving people individual checks does anything? No, I think it's just going to piss the worst a bunch thing of people off. If you That's the worst thing it, that could happen. You, you, you reinvest in urban school districts, You re not the way we're doing it, throwing money at it and just having to disperse. It's, it's all a con. Let me say you, this. Let's make college free for people no, that want to go. When we, let's when make we talk reparations, safe. when we let's, talk let's, reparations, let's, let's have better when lending we talk programs so people that want to buy a house can Charles, buy a house. When we let's talk, do something when we, to level, raise Charles, people when up. When we talk about reparations being given to black people. No white person should have a say in how we get it. That's well, one. why'd you ask my question That's then? One. Why are you asking me? Because I want your opinion. But, okay. and, and you never really gave it, but two. I absolutely gave it. I, could. I believe that giving people an individual check is a mistake. To give black people reparations, give us an individual check is to back up what the Bible says. A fool and his money will soon depart. If you you're give, calling if you all give black us, people fools? shut up and listen to what I'm about to say. Because hell, uh, no, I'm not I mean, saying that's that. What it sounds the like Bible saying. says a fool and his money would soon depart. If you give all black people a check for reparations right now, with the mental and spiritual, psychological condition and state of mind that we are in. We would never benefit as a whole and reparation should never be to bless the individual. It should be to uplift the whole. So individual payments is not what we're aiming for. Reparations should be looked at through a blue ribbon commission of the breast and brilliant black minds in this country and decide what do we need and what's the best way for to be given to us to move us forward from the historical disadvantages from the transatlantic slave trade, Jim Crow legislation and segregation in America, and absolute unequal and unfair treatment. But individual checks is a mistake. But I'm going to tell you this, brother. The biggest mistake America made with the ending of slavery, the United States Congress should have appropriated money for every slave to receive mental health treatment to do all that they did to us for 300 something years and then just one day, hey, y'all free to go, see you later, go take care of yourselves. We were not in a mental and spiritual condition where we were even ready to do so appropriately and correctly. We did the best that we possibly could with what we had, but the mental health treatment for the post-traumatic stress that we had gone through for hundreds of years should have been given to us. And that still, those residual effects still manifest itself in so many different ways today in this country, in my community. So how do you think reparations should be delivered? As an individual, I'm not qualified to say that. But I believe that the best Wait, and just, brightest mind. You just said that I didn't answer the question that I didn't answer, and I'm you're asking. refusing to answer what the I'm question. What I'm saying to you is, I said earlier, bring forth and the collective of the best and brightest minds of our people and let them get together in some type of study. When you say our and people, come who forth do you mean? with an agenda, black people. Okay. Let us come forth with that agenda. Because think about it. When America helped the Jewish community seek reparations from Germany, it wasn't black people or Hispanic people or Asian people in the room saying how Jews should be given reparations. It was the Jewish community speaking for themselves. It was them coming together and determining what's the best way to receive those things. And so I'm saying that reparations should not be given to black individuals. It should be given to us to uplift the whole, but the best and brightest minds of us should be brought together to determine how we should receive it and where we should receive it so it's not wasted. 
I, you know, I, first of all, I think it's absurd to suggest that someone can't have an opinion about something because of any immutable characteristic. It's like saying men shouldn't have an opinion on abortion because they have a penis or anything, anything. A straight person shouldn't have a, an opinion on sor any sort of policy that affects LGBT people like, like sports and high school and stuff. I think, in fact, this is the new modern era where we try to find an issue to, uh, any, any argument to bully silence based on an immutable characteristic which is awful, right? We should all be able to have conversations. And really, that's what I think was so important about the initial, initial mindset of Black Lives Matter, because what it was about was about encouraging people to have more conversations about how we can change the policing paradigm, how we can fix problems in America that systemically fail African-American people. But then it was used as a cudgel to beat hundreds of millions of dollars out of corporate America. That's right. We've seen an unbelievable, we're watching Steve Bannon appropriately be prosecuted in New York for dead build the wall and stealing a few million dollars allegedly. We're not seeing any conversation about Patrice Colors and, and where tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars have gone Let in that movement. Let me speak on that. Let me speak on that. Sure. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. Okay. See, now you as a white man is pointing Have an out, opinion on some. Oh my God. Let me finish. Shame on me. But I was speaking about that earlier. Okay. You as a white man has now given an honest critique about Black Lives Matter, the foundation, the organization. I'm talking about the national movement. That's we have local about. movement oh, no, that's a great organization. Let me finish. Okay. You as a white man just gave an opinion about Black Lives Matter, the national organization. Well, just about Patrice Cullors now, and her partner. Now, your critique is true. I know, your, I only speak your, the truth, your unlike critique, my partner your on critique, this show. Bless your heart. But anyway, your critique is right about the national Black Lives Matter organization. They have to be held accountable, even by the majority of us, for that kind of money never being reinvested back into the black community but you look over at the victims' families over the, a billion dollars. The victims of now, unjust me, police let violence, let me their families got nothing. Let me finish. Just, I said no reinvestment okay. on any level. But also what is even more hurtful about it, Charles, is that you said something else that was true. And I don't, know, I don't think you really went too deep into it. Black Lives Matter was never meant to speak to speak that to white people. Black Lives Matter no, was first was. founded. No, 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 no. Black Lives Matter was first founded to speak that to black people because of the enormous killing in the black community and the devaluing of black life among black people. That was at the root of it in the beginning. But it later took on a whole another form based on factual evidence and truth in this country to include other things. But those black women who founded it was really wanting to address the black on black self-hate and killing in our community where we were not valuing our own lives. That's a fact. Well, what, it is a very sad fact that you've seen a lot of self-dealing, overpaying uh, friends and family, and just not a lot to show for the meaning, buying mansions and calling them incubators. But just because you can condemn an organization that I think grifted hundreds of millions of dollars. The leadership of it. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't undermine an idea. But conversely, I think when we go back to Kanye, when, when you talk about Kanye wearing a White Lives Matter shirt, it was just about getting attention. It wasn't him condemning the Black Lives Matter movement, but he did condemn it. And he didn't parse it. He just condemned it holistically. And I didn't see the Tucker and, Cross and, interview. I didn't see that. Right. When you talk about anything holistically, right, there are white people that are evil and white people that are amazing. There are black people that are evil and black people that are amazing and a whole bunch of mediocre people of all races, right? And we should return to talking about systemic problems and how to address them, but talk about people individually. When you say a white person shouldn't be allowed to have an opinion on something, you're just furthering the new bigotry in America no, when I say that actually that a would argue person, that... When I say the white person does not have the moral authority to say how black people should receive reparations, I believe that well, 100%. When it's talking, I've got to send the, the uh, IRS this week a quarter of a million dollars. A government that I feel largely does nothing for me, takes so much money from me because I work six jobs. It's not just one job. I work six jobs because I grew up in a rent house without any money and I had to work my way through school and work my ass off to make a bunch of money and I still work my ass off all the time. I work seven days a week, 12 hours a day and I send the government a whole bunch of money and I don't think the government does anything for me. Anything at all. Do you right? realize when the IRS came into existence, two other organizations came in at the same time, in the same year. Do you know what they were? What were they? 
research this. Yeah. When the IRS came into existence, the Federal Reserve came into existence right. at the same time. Also, the Secret Service. Well, hold on, it gets a little deeper. <sighs> the Federal Reserve and the IRS at the same time. The Secret Service and shortly after that, the FBI. Do you believe, and I believe this, the United States Constitution and the Founding Fathers never meant for the IRS to become what it became. And in fact, when you look at that man, we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, how they, how they hired, what, 65 or 67,000 new employees? I think it was 82. They're, they budgeted for, I think, 87,000 new agents. Now, what do you think they're going to do with all the agents? Well, the whole design... They're coming after it, it, It's about the statism, American right? It's about ending individual liberty. And see, that's what I think a lot of the... We need to move. We need to radically now, I'm a, change... I'm going to be honest with you. What are we talking about right now? Mm -hmm. The other stuff, the powers that be are not afraid of that. But where we're talking right now... That's what a real threat is. No, I absolutely what we talking about agree. Right they now want us divided. Is what good people but when attacked. you when you repeat the talking point that white people shouldn't have an opinion on the moral just, authority to see are, how we should receive You are something. just playing into the hands of the government because what the government wants us is, and I think it's a uniparty. I think both the Republicans and the Democrats work together to control all of us. I'm talking about on the national level, the federal level, and they use different talking points to incite different groups of people based on what's going to anger people. Because what they don't want is unity. They don't want people talking about how we can get our government to do more for American citizens that pay into the system, right? Because the people who don't pay in the system, the ultra wealthy, the post monetary, they pay two, three percent of their wealth. They've had it all see, structured. Did you see Me where Rupert you? Murdoch? paid the same amount in taxes as his secretary yeah. did? I, I don't doubt it, right? But you and me, as, as middle-class Americans, we pay 40 to 50% of our aggregate income is paid into taxes. So who were those agents hired to come after? Well, they're coming after the middle, right? Not the this, rich. But this is all designed to control, right? And, and Kanye, by, by, by pushing the false evil narrative of anti-Semitism, this cabal of Jews that control the financial structure, when it's not. You can't talk about Jewish people holistically. Are there some wealthy people of, of many races, although mostly white, of many faiths, probably mostly Christian, but I'm sure there are many Jews that have a small group of people that control all the economics of this world, see, the possibly. See, see the mistake, but it's not the, the mistake Jewish brother, people. The mistake and, that brother made was this. I mean, by being an anti-Semitic bigot, you, that's he, the mistake Here's he the mistake that brother made. One time in 1995, there was Jews outside, some members of the Jewish community outside a high school auditorium where we were having a rally. And they were chanting, death to Farrakhan, death to Farrakhan. Well, Farrakhan and said some awful things me, about the but Jews. But let me finish. I'm speaking of myself now. Okay. So when I took the stage, I said that it's time to go to war and you Jews can knuckle up. The war is going down put your boots on because the war is going down. The mistake I made was not speaking to those specific men and women outside who was calling for the death of my leader. I said, you Jews. I spoke about all Jewish people. That was a mistake to lump all Jewish people with my frustration with those who was calling for death of a man that I love. But Kanye West and I didn't see the Tucker Carlson interview, so I'm sure you went even deeper into it, so I really can't speak about that. But, brother, I would hope and pray that, brother, if you truly feel that way, then you come before the world and explain yourself, man. You come before the world and back up what you're saying, because then we'll find out, really, are you seeking attention, or are you just crazy? Because for him to say the things he said about members of the Jewish community, don't seem like he's trying to get attention to me, Charles. I think there's more behind that. He wouldn't say what he said about the Jewish community because he's seeking attention. I think there's more behind that. I think everything Kanye does is designed to be attention-seeking, right? I think he's inflammatory because I think that's how, you know, he has made a tremendous living off of his musical genius. And I would argue, I've seen him in concert a few times, he is absolutely, a, a, I think he's the modern-day Elvis, a tremendous talent, right? But... He's got a wife, they're divorcing, who's made, who's famous just for being famous, right? Is she and this, really? This, this machine. Is she really? Well, you don't think she's famous just for being famous? So you, so, she's a reality so, star, So now right? you're going to sit here and say, oh, Quanell, you're not saying the truth and you're running from the truth. Do you really want to sit here and say that Kim Kardashian is famous because she's famous? 
Well, she is a product of this reality paradigm. And how did she get famous? Well, from a sex tape that her mother sold. She as got an allegation. famous. I don't know if she that's She got true. famous from sleeping with every popular black male figure okay. she could find. Okay. She got popular from making sex videos. I, I will tell you. And she got popular from moving from one brother to another every 30 days. I, I, I don't Let's wanna, be honest, I don't baby. Because she didn't work Kim her Kardashian, way up through the industry but to become she famous. She actually did work her way up through the reality industry. No, she worked her way up through the bed. Room. It was most she worked her way up through the, the back seat of somebody's vehicle. Got her she worked her way up through of videotapes of sexual exploits, you know, but she sure as hell didn't work her way up in the industry. Okay. I've only met her once. She was very nice, and she was very nice to everyone at the Toyota Center. And, and I judge people I by the way that. that the way they treat people that they don't have to treat well, well, right? And she seemed to I be very kind. That. I have heard other things. But I will stand by. She is the the biggest reality star of all time. I respect However, that she degree. got she got there. Uh, clearly, the sex tape contributed to it. But she worked it. That her mama sold. Right. She worked. Well, that's the allegation. That her mama sold. But she she worked it masterfully and has built an empire. Right. And that empire is driven by controversy and attention. And what which does that say to point. other young girls but, in America? I mean, but the thing is, you're what does that say to other no, young women in No, I think it's a horrible message, and we we have to have better messaging and better parenting. So when we but cancel when you something. Talk about, now, that's what we on. should counsel. Hold on. When you talk about Farrakhan, before we, we filmed this, I was reading you some quotes of some horrifying anti-Semitic You were things reading that, misquotes. No, I was actually reading, reading actual quotes, quotes from his speech. You were reading misquotes. Where he referred misquotes to Jews as the and satanic Jews. you were Jews not reading actual and, quotes. And what I will do for you, okay. you go and do the actual research, and I'll come on this show. I'll come Here, on this show with you thing. and answer any question you got about something Minister Farrakhan is I will not abide a race. Tom Tommy Tuberville, the senator from Alabama, made a horrifying comment about reparations where he referred to all black people as criminals and it was disgusting and it was racist and I don't think anyone should abide a racist. I also don't think anyone should abide an anti-Semite and anti-Semite means anti-Jewish. You can you know, parse that language. But what's I don't think anyone should abide a bigot. But what's hurtful about Tuberville right. is that black athletes made his career. Almost certainly. Black athletes made him successful. Right. And when you watch the videotapes of him interacting with black athletes, he often tried to portray himself as being one of them. Now that he's no longer coaching them and they can do nothing for him, he's now flipped the script and letting the real bigotry come that, out. You know who that sounds like? Who does it Donald sound? Trump. Because before Donald Trump was called a racist, he was hanging out with black hip-hop figures all the time. Before he was called a racist, he was going to black hip-hop parties and he was hanging out with black hip hop icons but after he decided to become to run for president then the real mask came off and he showed us who he really is Tuberfield is no different well I will say that there are a lot of people that were a proponent of Donald Trump until he decided to run as a Republican and in the Clintons and a number of people that all of a sudden when he Saw, they saw him as a threat. And they took his money they as began, Democrats, right, too. They had began a problem characterizing with him in a different way. I do think he is incredibly duplicitous, but I think a number of people are. I think you're being duplicitous here. I think that you are trying to, to parse a comment that you made historically about Jewish people where the, the only comment should be, hey, that was a horrible thing to say. I shouldn't have said And I did say right? that. Okay, well, mm -hmm. good. I, at and the I end, did say at, that. At the end of the day, his, uh, Kanye's anti-Semitism is pushing the same narrative that Hitler used to justify a horrifying genocide, right? And I think, as, as a, not just America, but the world, but specifically America, we need to stop looking for reasons to silence people and divide people and instead possibly consider treating everyone equally. I know that's crazy, and then treating them differently based on their individual actions. I know that makes too much damn sense, but Charles, let's, let's keep let telling me, saying why people need me, to shut up. Let me tell you something. We keep talking about the IRS and the FBI. Hmm. Then we'll really see who the real enemies are. Because black people for generations have been saying the FBI was corrupt. The well, FBI, if you look at the, the FBI's FBI, involvement in corruption the, the on African-American people. The FBI was a notorious group of criminals. The Aretha Franklin disclosure is horrifying. Now when you see what they've done with Donald Trump and how they politicized the FBI now. So the Steele dossier was a horrifying crime. It lets crime. us all know. The FISA court lying that we're was all, all in trouble. Right? It lets us all know we're all in danger. Unless we fall in line and be quiet. Like you there want, you go. Like you want me there to do. There you go. No, if we be quiet about them, 
if we be quiet about these three letter agencies mm -hmm. that are absolutely not in the best interest of the American people as a whole, regardless of your race. Well, That's I might we disagree dangerous. with you about a lot of stuff, Quanell, but when they come for you, I'll be standing with you. Yeah, but they're going to come for the both of us. We keep talking like this.